1947. A newly graduated young doctor, Robert Stevens, was offered a residency in internal medicine at Toronto Western Hospital. It seemed like a lucky future was assured. However, Dr. Stevens declined the promising offer because he and his fiancée, Ruth Petrie, decided to devote themselves to working overseas as missionaries. The future proved that they were sincere and consistent in their belief in serving the highest ideals of humanity and God. Robert Oduada Stevens was born on March 18, 1924, in Toronto, Ontario. It was a time of a worldwide social and economic shock. As Dr. Stevens wrote in his autobiographical book, Climbing, My memories of early years were those of the Great Depression, when frugality was the watchword. To this day, I still switch out lights and turn off dripping taps. Young Bob Stevens attended University of Toronto schools when he was in grade six. Already during his school years, he became heavily involved in the Inner School Christian Fellowship, where he rose from a common member to the president of the organization. Working in this organization, and later when Robert Stevens was already a student at a medical school, his activities in Varsity Christian Fellowship finally shaped his worldview. He now saw his future as a missionary. During that era, another important event occurred. In June of 1940, Robert Stevens met Ruth Petrie for the first time. The meeting was fateful. Having much in common in their views on life, their relationship moved to another level and had never broken. They were married on June 26, 1948, and in 1949, the newlyweds started their missionary journey. To gain preparatory experience, they spent a year at a Methodist mission hospital in Bella Bella, British Columbia. After that, the couple was ready to head overseas. In this first phase of their missionary work, colonialism was still the norm. Although from 1948, when the United Nations was established, there came a huge paradigm shift in the 1950s. It is fair to say that mission work was and is religious, but a doctor and nurse not only have spiritual motives, they had a medical motivation as well for deep rural people who did not have access to good quality health care. The mission hospital at Nyankandi, Belgian Congo, was a real challenge. Starting with literally erecting mud huts for bed patients. After eight years, they were working in a 100 bed hospital with a medical, surgical, pediatric, and obstacle divisions. In the late 1950s, a wave of anti-colonialism swept over Africa, leading the drive towards independence. The security situation continued to deteriorate rapidly. On June 30th, 1960, the Stevens fled the Ankandu on the plane that turned out to be the last one to leave the local airport of Bunya before independence. After returning to Canada in 1960, Dr. Stevens continued his extremely active life and career. For his interest in world mission has never diminished. However, the nature of missions was changing. Just to outline the main Dr. Stevens achievements, the founder of the Missionary Health Institute adjacent to the North York General Hospital, the leadership positions with both the Evangelical Medical Aid Society and the Christian Medical and Dental Association of Canada, chairman of the board of the Evangelical Medical Aid Society, the first editor of Focus, a joint magazine of the two mission organizations. In 1973, Dr. Stevens was elected president of the medical staff at the North York General Hospital with more than 200 physicians and surgeons on staff. However, the president term was over one day and Robert Stevens became ready for new challenges. With a lifelong interest in encouraging the development of young people, the Stevens decided to move to rural. The transition from urban to rural practice was a real challenge and a new great success. The medical practice grew faster than anticipated. The new office, new patients, and new hospital all took a great deal of effort, but the rewards were most worthwhile. While based in rural Ontario, Dr. Stevens undertook many short-term mission trips to China, Cuba, 
Africa, the Caribbean, and Eastern Europe under the auspices of the Evangelical Medical Aid Society. After 14 trips to China, he was granted honorary citizenship in recognition of his contribution to public health in that country. On October the 5th, 2006, Dr. Robert Stevens was awarded membership in the Order of Canada. As stated in the award description, Robert Stevens has greatly contributed to Canada's reputation as a caring and giving nation. For over 50 years, he has tirelessly worked to provide health care and medical treatment for the world's most needy. Looking at the life and times of Robert Stevens, one may wonder, what was the source of this man's indomitable energy? Where did he get his staying power from? Dr. Stevens answers this question for himself in his autobiographical book, Climbing. I realized that the Lord had trusted me and promised to be with me, strengthen me, and give me wisdom. The French say that as everything changes, everything remains the same. Over Dr. Bob's lifetime, the world changed, medicine changed, and outreach changed. The citation already mentioned tends to honor service and sacrifice, sharing technical expertise and the related institutions. That reflects a change from the very personal decision to become a missionary. But something did not change. Dr. Bob's faith is still rock solid, and by his reckoning, God used his career to bring healing to the nations. Thank you, Dr. Robert Stevens. Also, thanks be to God for his exemplary life of service to others.